So, okay, let me see the shirt. Let me see the shirt one more time on camera, if you would. Yeah, you got a little. You got a kind of underground rap pop, and then I can't see, you know, all this stuff. Gangsta, political, background, conscious, um, masquerade, school, old, so old school, mastermind, lodge, underground. Boom, but but lodge, is, lodge is for logic, right? Exactly. So logic is the whole concept of like using your head, you know, doing what, what makes sense. And that's what you're that's what you're promoting here, using your head. One hundred percent. All right. So tell me about Rolando H. Brown and the Hip Hop Association. No, nah, thank you so much. Um, well, my name is Rolando H. Brown, and the Hip Hop Association is a five hundred one c three nonprofit based out of New York City. Um, we are celebrating our fifth year anniversary this year. And we were um, created and founded by a group of um, individuals spearheaded by a woman by the name of Martha Diaz, who was a filmmaker and an educator who grew up in the hip-hop community and uh, saw an opportunity to leverage both media and education in order to do what we consider to be facilitating, fostering, and preserving the hip-hop culture that we know to be rooted in positive community development. So that's, that's essentially what we do. Um, we have a volunteer staff of about 35 people, and we produce two events as well as support the production of about 40 other ones throughout the year. And what are those two events? I think you just went uh, through we, one, right? We did. We just got finished just this Saturday with the uh, fifth annual H2O Hip Hop Odyssey International Film Festival. This is a film festival where we collect um, hip hop films from all over the world. Um, we showed this year um, about 75, but in the past have shown upwards of 100 hip-hop films. Um, these are short films, documentary narratives, speech narratives. Um, these are music videos, PSAs, all films that are influenced by and or discuss some issue within hip-hop with a particular focus on social awareness. So these are hip-hop films that touch upon issues in the community, um, everything from the history of the hip hop community to educational messages we need to, to learn to misogyny to empowerment to what hip hop looks like in a foreign country like Germany or what it looks like in Cuba or what it looks like in Ghana. And we leverage these films in order to produce a film festival as well as panel discussions with some of our most notable members in the community to discuss um, ways with which we can help grow the hip hop community. So don't worry about it. So the second right. part, the second film festival that you do is what? And we actually do a hip-hop education summit. So um, in 2003, we started a hip-hop education summit because uh, Martha Diaz, as well as a variety of other educators, always understood the educational power of hip-hop. There's always been um, educational messages. So when Karis one said, you must learn, he meant something. When Nas said, the world is yours, he meant something. When Queen Latifah said, U-N-I-T-Y, she was speaking a very strong educational message. So what a lot of these educators decided to do was to take the educational messages that already existed within hip-hop and use that in order to reach young people in the classroom. So they began to develop curriculum around the educational messages and really aesthetics of hip-hop, um, focus is, on health, focus on... What does the curriculum of, uh, of educational messages for, from hip-hop look like? Do you analyze the song, analyze the lyrics, analyze what's going on, or what, how That's does really that... Question. Yeah. It takes a lot of different shapes. Um, all three of those things take place. Um, sometimes we just analyze the music and usurp from the music educational messages. Other times we use the, mes mes the messages within the music as a starting point, as a lens to talk about larger issues, so globalization or mathematics, for example. Um, a lot of our educators will use the record industry as a case study for right. explaining things like finance or you know, um, managing your money. A, a lot of others will talk about the immigrant community and how hip hop was started, you know, among immigrant communities in the Bronx and then use that to talk about gentrification and, you know, globalization and travel and things along those lines. Um, sometimes they'll use um, messages within the song again to talk about race relations. So people just, you know, use it to, um, to develop, again, this curriculum around ways with which you can use hip hop, the culture of hip hop, and different elements within hip hop to teach young people, and really to get them excited. And that, that's really what I think a lot of it is, too. Um, there's a lot of excitement that is within hip hop naturally, so 
when we can use the excitement that already exists, lay on top of it a focus on taking this edutainment that exists within hip hop and translate that, you come up with some really, really powerful lesson plans. Um, we have a hip hop education guidebook that we just published that's doing really, really well. Mm -hmm. And uh, all of these curriculums, they match at rather meet national standards. And that's what's really impressive to me that's as great. a person who's, who's not an educator um, for these curriculums or curricula rather, for these lesson plans to be able to meet national standards is a really I important step for us. And you have 31 people in different states. Now, what, is that, what does that mean? I mean, when you have this distributed organization, what's it doing? Um, it's working. It's collecting research. It's helping to produce events. It's helping to organize websites. It's participating in dialogues about the history of hip-hop as well as um, refining some of the uh, confusion that may exist around the community. And what's, what's um, that also, confusion? Can you can, can, we, can we go into that for a second? I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of misconceptions. So tell me a little bit about that, so people know. I, I think the biggest misconception is <clears throat> that there aren't large populations of people within the hip hop community who are not only interested in positive growth, but who are actively working towards it. And 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 you know, I tend to not use the word misconception. I, I think that it, it's more so just a limited view into you know, what the community really is. And that's why we created the film festival in the first place, was to give people an insider's look at, you know, all of the people who are actively every day um, believing in, in, in this culture and its opportunity to, you know, create positive community development like it did back in the 70s. It's still doing the same thing. It's just doing it in a much uh, broader way and in a different sort of way. So I think that's one of the things we like to remind people of. Yeah, you can't go out and say, hey, we're doing this. We're making, we're making positive messages. You actually have to show, show people. And you, exactly. guys are, you guys are actually out there and, and making it visible for everybody. 100%. I mean, we have, we have the pleasure of being supported, like you said, by all of these volunteers who are really interested in making sure that it's shown. And so in our community, we say something called show and prove. You know, it's just we're, we're very much about just showing and proving the work that's taking place and if anything I think that's one of the biggest um, things that are lacking. People just don't have a, a platform to really see all the positive work that's taking place and so we provide that.